I've been wanting to talk about this for a while, so let's get into it. Do the positives outweigh the negatives when it comes to artificial intelligence and our environment? It's actually a lot more nuanced than what you've been hearing. We'll start with something you may have already noticed. Using AI is as easy and accessible as ever. Before it was YouTube, you watched the YouTube video, thought, like, how do you fix your toilet? But now you can ask your specific question for your type of toilet and get that answered. The generative AI is an incredible breakthrough. Think of it as a magic wand that makes anything we do faster or more insightful. You don't have to be a programmer. You don't need to be an engineer to, to leverage it. They're right. We even use AI to help formulate your forecasts. You can take a trained AI model and we can leverage that to produce a weather forecast in a matter of minutes. We have a, an AI that can answer weather questions, like, should I go golfing today? Which brings us to the good news. AI, in some of its uses, is helping experts fight climate change. We're going to be able to produce uh, forecasts much more quickly and be able to leverage observations in a way that we really haven't been able to yet. From predicting hurricanes earlier to better managing renewable energy, it's true that AI can help scientists mitigate the impacts of extreme weather. Instead of just getting a human-readable output, like there's a 50% chance of rain, but then if there's a 50% chance of rain, like what, what else could happen? It's the kind of technology that promises to save lives. These are actually quite energy intensive operations. The energy footprint that these data centers are putting on us, it's actually kind of in, in some ways contributing to the climate problem we're hoping to try to solve. It can be easy to forget that behind every digital conversation is a very physical footprint. Energy consumption in the US is like increasing and that's something that no one really start coming, like for you every day, you don't actively think about it. You might spend just seconds typing a question, but on the other side, massive servers are whirring, fans are spinning, and power is flowing. Every time you execute an LLM, every time you go to ChatGPT or Gemini or any of these platforms, and you're, you're posing a question, right? That question then travels to massive data centers that need enormous amounts of power to operate. 10, 20, 30 times more electricity than the sort of similar equipment we have if we just do regular activities online. If you count data centers and data networks and all the devices that we use to go online, the total carbon footprint of the internet is the same as global shipping and global aviation. Rural areas in the U.S. can't always support the kind of power needed to run these centers, so they end up relying heavily on fossil fuels to make it work. If you live near a data center, you might find your electricity is a little behaving weird or maybe a little bit um, unstable or most likely more expensive. They have 24-hour security lights that are very bright. They make a noise that is at a very low frequency and vibrates through into the neighborhood, and they also have backup generators that are almost always run on diesel, and they have to run them often. Living near or downwind from a cluster of data centers makes your air quality worse. When you land in Atlanta at the airport, you can like look down and I was like, oh yeah, that's this Google data center because like you see all the, the cooling towers right next to it. Now that cooling is very important. It's why these centers aren't just burning through electricity, but massive amounts of water too. My biggest concern is water. Water's the limited resource. Water's the one that we have not faced up to. They take hundreds of thousands of gallons of water to train a single AI model. That's the equivalent of the water that a small town would use annually in a given year. The water in these cooling systems evaporates on the spot. Millions of gallons gone in an instant. By my calculation, it was using the water of about six and a half million people. And as AI demand skyrockets, so does the pressure on local water supplies, especially in areas already dealing with drought. There's also the footprint that we're leaving in terms of mining rare earth minerals in order to supply the underlying chips that these supercomputers, these, these again, AI data centers are going to need. It's a reminder that the convenience of AI isn't without its costs. One that's measured not in dollars, but in degrees and drops. So are the benefits worth that cost? I think the jury is still out in my mind. Should I use a car? Should I use an airplane? Should I use AI? It's tough to say how much is good, how much is bad, and, and what the trade-offs are. It seems like there's a lot of opportunities, a lot of unknowns as well. People should care about the energy AI is using because it's something that we all participate in. It's going to be underpinning everything we do online. Where does that leave us? 
Is there a path forward that balances emerging tech with environmental conservation? We need to make sustainability as much of a concern as security and reliability. There are major tech companies already investing in and prioritizing renewable energy to power their AI data centers. You're seeing things like tech firms, Google and Meta. These organizations are signing power purchase agreements specifically to target how the electricity that they're using in their data centers is being sourced. There's also a big push toward improving AI models so they don't require as much computing muscle. They have an incentive to, to be more efficient, to create maybe smaller models. We didn't get the seatbelt until it was required by law. And I believe we may be facing a similar situation with the growth of generative AI. For everyday users like you and I, there are also simple ways to make a difference. Only use AI when it adds real value, not for every random question. Save your answers so you don't have to repeat a query. Support companies and AI programs that are committed to clean energy. And keep learning, because more awareness sparks more change. The good news is that it's a problem that each of us has a meaningful role to play. Every one of us goes on the internet and every one of us has an employer or an organization we're affiliated with that we could go to and start asking, are we measuring the global impact and environmental impact of our online computing? At the end, like we, we, we should be smart, we should inform people. We can still like move along and use the right tools to help us be productive uh, humans. I think if we can you know, prioritize and work together to understand what are those sustainable practices, it's really gonna set us up well um, in the long hand to make that question on whether or not it's a net positive or a net negative, very clearly a net positive. In the end, the real impact doesn't come from the machines, but from how we choose to use them. So AI can be a powerful ally in the fight to protect our planet, if we choose wisely.